Hey everyone, Captain's Tech here. So in this video, I wanted to go over how I go about completing a project from start to finish. But first, if you're new to this channel, my name is Christopher Adams. I am a senior full stack software engineer living in the Tampa area. Um, my goal for this video is to try and teach you all some new things. And if you get any value out of it, remember to like and subscribe, share it with anyone that you know is interested in learning development. It'll mean a lot to me. It'll mean a lot to the community. Let's get this going. All right, so I'm gonna open this up with a long time ago. Actually, I think I was junior level. My engineering manager told me this, and it's a very good point, and I hammered it in, and it's something that I live by today. He says, get to the 90% completion mark of a feature really, really quickly, okay? Why did he say that? He said that for two reasons. One is, you'll find that that last 10% push um, is a huge majority of the work, right? You can get everything working, happy path. And happy path, I mean, the path that you intend the users to go when they click on things and they submit things, that everything just works. But there's edge cases that you need to fine tune, right? What happens if the user does this weird thing and clicks on that and then hits the submit button and, and like, what happens, right? And these little fine details are what you have to fine tune. And that last 10% en encapsulates that, right? You need to error handle gracefully. You need to show them success states for different things. You need to clean up the code. You need to maybe write some tests, right? These are all, this is all involved in that last 10%. So get to the 90% completion mark quickly. So how I go about building a feature. I'm a full stack software engineer, so I work on both the front end and the back end. And someone will typically create a ticket for me, a card, and this could be in different platforms like Jira, Trello, um, I've used Notion, but most of the time for me, it's been Jira. And this is just an area where a project manager will create a card for you that's on a dashboard of a single task, right? It might be a feature, might be a bug fix, um, things like that. So usually in that card, if, it's, if it has a UI, they will link to a Figma design. And within the Figma design, it's an area to actually view what the UI should look like. Some designer might just mock it up real quick. Hey, this design should look like this. And what I'll do is I'll look at that design and I'm like, okay. So I, I'll look at it and I'll first see if I have any questions based on the design. I'll say, hey, this design isn't really accounting for error handling or error states that the user should see. Hey, this mock-up, isn't accounting for any success states. What should those look like? Hey, this mock-up isn't accounting for responsive design. I see we have the desktop layout here, but what about mobile layout? What should that look like? So I'll, and then I'll say, hey, what, I see this has some buttons here. What should these buttons do? What should the next thing the user see uh, after they click the button? So I'll hash through all these details because I'm more experienced now. And I'll, and I'll know the questions, types of questions to ask, right? Um, so those are typically the first questions that I'll try to comb through when I see something, if those things aren't provided. Um, and then the next thing I'll do is I personally usually like starting with the front end first. Um, it depends on the, on the particular project, but usually I like building the UI first. So I'll go in, I'll build the UI and code. And these days I like using CSS, um, libraries like Tailwind. So I'll quickly go in there and I'll build out some React, some Tailwind, and I'll try to granularize each of these little components. So say I had a page um, that involved a header, I'll build the header, I have another component, I'll build that component, and et cetera. And I'll try and build the responsiveness, and then I'll put some mock data in there. I won't actually wire it up to being fed from the server, but I'll add some mock data, some hard-coded data, just to have the view. And I'm like, okay, UI is done, here's some mock data. So the next step I would take after building and mocking up the UI is going back to the original designer and showing them in code what I've built. Make sure that everything looks as close as I possibly can make it to the original design. And we use Figma for this design system. Uh, the last three companies I worked at, we've used Figma. So it's a very, very popular tool. There are definitely alternatives. I think Adobe, um, Illustrator, and things like that um, work pretty good, but Figma is Figma is all the rage these days in 2024. So I make sure I get the sign off on that. 
And then next I'll start working on the back end side of things. So the next step that I would take is I would build the server side stuff. If it involves a route, which is like an endpoint that you need to hit, so say slash add comment, right? I'll build the route. And these days I work in various languages. It could be Node.js, it could be Go, it could be PHP, right? But I'll build the route. And the route, I'll tie in um, what you would call a controller, right? So the controller is controlling the validation, the flow of data. And after the controller, I'll build the model, which will model the data to the database. And around that time, after I create these things, I'll typically write some server-side tests that have to do with the route model controller flow. And I'll say, hey, if we submit this data, um, I should expect this thing. Um, and then from there, I'll make sure I have error handling in and success states, like good, bad case scenarios, things like that. So I have the mocked up UI, hard-coded data. I have the route with the tests and everything and the model controller, all that good to go. So the back end's basically done. The front end still needs some more work. So I'll redirect my attention back towards the front end and I'll pull in the real data that's going to be fed into the, um, the UI now that I have the back end set up. And then I'll populate the real data inside of the UI. Uh, at this point, everything's pretty much done. I'll make sure the error handling's good. I'll make sure the success state's good. I'll make sure to click on and do as many weird different things as I can um, to make sure I acceptance test it, which is basically clicking on things. And then I'll go in and I'll write some UI based tests. I'll write some front end tests. Um, and then I may even go through and refactor um, both the front end and the back end, try and look at some things that I may have done in a rush just to try and get everything together, try and clean things up and try and make the code more clean, clean code. Uh, if things need to be separated out into many different files instead of a few big files, I'll make sure to do that where I can reuse things like reusable functions, I'll make sure to do that. And I typically take that approach. Okay, so after everything is said and done, I will run the whole project by um, other members of my team. I'll show them what I've built. I'll walk them through some of the code. Uh, everyone's good with it. Then I will go ahead and submit the pull requests, right? We use GitHub. So I'll submit the front end pull request. I'll submit the back end pull request. If there's any other repos that are involved with the code, I'll submit those as well, all at the same time, all on the same day. I'll assign some reviewers to it and get it signed off. So at this stage, either they'll approve it or they will leave me some feedback and say, hey, can you make this better? Can you make that better? And I'll go in ASAP and I'll try and correct these things, get some good turnaround and get it out the door. After this, we'll merge it to a development environment. Right, so all of this time I'm only working in my local environment. We'll get that merged in development. They may test it there and other people will pull it into their system. Uh, and then we'll get it up into the QA environment where our official QA testers will test it. If all is good there, we will ship that puppy off to production. But remember, never deploy right before lunch, never deploy on a Friday, right? Typically the days and times you want to deploy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday's kind of pushing it, but it's still okay. Definitely don't deploy on Friday. Definitely don't deploy right before lunch. Because if you do any of those things, you're gonna get, most likely, if anything goes wrong, you're gonna get interrupted in the middle of lunch when you're away from your keyboard or on a weekend or at nighttime. You don't really want that. I could go into way more detail in other videos. I just kind of wanted to give you a high overview of what it's like for my project workflow and I hope this was useful to you all. Please remember, like and subscribe. I have a lot more content coming out soon. See you all.